Hey guys, it's Dave. Welcome back to Hobbylink TV. In this episode, we're going to take a closer look at Bandai's new RG all-purpose humanoid Evangelion Unit 2 production model. Fwah, what, an, what a name. And you can order that now on hlj.com. Please check out the link in the description to get your place on the order list. So like before with the Unit 1 and Unit 3, it features a wide range of motion after assembly with particular attention paid to ensuring the armor parts don't interfere with posability. The head is molded in multiple small color parts, uh, more about building that later, and that is to reproduce its complex color combinations without painting, so great color separation here. This time, however, there is no EX version, so you get the unit 2 and the weapons, and that's it. As you can see here, there are loads of different colored parts, which is really nice to see, and that's how you get that really good color separation. You also get a lot of nice stickers, and these are in both water decal version and actual stickers. So the shiny ones are the stickers, and you obviously get a nice part of the manual that shows you exactly where to put them, and even the choice between certain stickers that you can use, or rather water decals. So that's a nice addition. You get three different types of knives, two of each of those, one rifle, and obviously the umbilical cord, even though, you know, you'd have to have the other Unit 1 DX to be able to use that. You get this weapon that can also be folded up and uh, put into storage mode, which is quite nice. So here it is. Uh, it's pretty simple. I've put the hand on it already. This uh, end bit can actually... Okay. This end bit can actually move in and out. And the top bit is used to, you know, you can flip it around and that's for when you put it into storage mode. The other rifle you've seen before, but as you can see, the hand's attached and you get loads of different types of hands for the knives and the ones that you don't need to use with weapons. So open, running, all that stuff. It's really good. You get a lot and a lot of hands and also those really cool colored knuckles. So I didn't actually put many of the stickers on uh, and none of the water decals just right now. But here is me putting it on one of the knives, or the daggers, that hasn't come previously before. But as you can see, it doesn't look the best. I would not recommend using the stickers if you want a professional look. Instead, I would just paint it with a uh, silver marker. Most of the runners say 2020, and you use most of all of them, so that's good. So let's get into some things I saw during the build process. You get this ni nice little uh, clear plastic part that you have to sandwich in the middle. The thing is that you don't see it, so it's quite weird. As for the eyes, you get a choice between using uh, stickers or actually like a white piece and then sandwiching on a green piece that means that it's like green plastic. But I, want, I wanted the stickers. I went with the stickers because they're a bit more flashy, as you can see here. I did damage one of them but on the right, but uh, I just think it looked better overall. It was tricky to put together. Some of you may find it quite easy. But, you know, getting the parts in the right way and, uh, and sandwiching them all together wasn't the easiest thing I've ever done. As you can see here, you need to flip parts up and down and it's got a lot of processes. So if you don't do them right and you're not paying 100% attention, then you're going to have issues. As you can see, the end result's quite impressive. Uh, as it says in the manual, you don't need to paint. So there's that lovely sandwich layer process. But it's not as simple as it looks. So, you know, pay attention doing this and really treat those stickers well. You get quite a few of them, so don't worry about messing up. I could replace that one it's left if I wanted to. But yeah, just be careful with that because it can make it look a little bit goofy. Here is the leg frame, and all you do is put the armor parts on it, and then as at the top here, you can see this mechanism, and that allows for the, the armor to move in tandem with the leg, and it tells you to check that that's moving. Mine was okay. Another moving check was with the arm. So you move the hand and it's got this little part that makes the armor move, move with it. And mine was working correctly. I tell you, it's not always working though. It's sometimes a bit stiff. At the back of the EVA, like with all the other EVAs that we've had, you can store the little knife in the back. And that um, is quite difficult to get out, but you would have to fling it like that. I found that this EVA was just like the others that it can stand uh, very reasonably and quite sturdy. This one was sturdier than the others, but I'll get into that a little bit later. I love the detail in this kit, the hands, the face, you know, all that color separation, and those stickers that they tell you to put on um, during the build process. It's a pity though it doesn't come with anything like this massive gun that was in the EX or the, or the transform, transform platform, like in 
the first kit. But, I mean, I do like that new weapon, but this old one, it's just getting a bit boring. I know there are some people who, who didn't buy the other two kits, and therefore it's necessary to include. But it really would have been nice to have another weapon, um, I feel. So, I do like this weapon here, the, the Thunder Spear. Uh, it's better than the pallet rifle. But even then, it's quite plain. It would be nice if they'd given us, say, two new weapons. Because, I mean, there's no EX, so that would have been pretty cool. But anyway, it holds them really well. I love the hands, the fact that they type of sandwich into the actual era itself. It makes it very sturdy, and those hands aren't coming off like other kits. So, that's very impressive. Okay, and now let's go to articulation. Now, I'm not going to lie, this is, I believe, this virtually the same unit as the Zero One that we have reviewed before on this channel. It's got that same type of skeleton that um, is really great at type of bending and forming all these different positions because of the three links here. It also still has, though, it has the weird parts here that lock in like so. So you peg it in and then you have to twist it to lock it into place. And I've said this before, but I'll say again, the thing is that when you put the legs on these pegs here, the friction of moving the leg can actually stick onto that peg and move it a tiny bit, a tiny bit, a tiny bit, and then suddenly the whole thing pops out. So I said last time, would it be possible if you could glue that in once it's locked into place? Because you're not actually using this as any point of motion once it's locked in, because the peg is the part that moves the leg and not this itself. So last time I didn't do it because I was afraid, and this time I went ahead and did it. And the improvements are great. It does not move out of place anymore. As you can see, it's nice and snug in there. Um, and obviously, as long as you don't get glue on the peg itself, these legs are still gonna move perfectly. So they he doesn't do the splits because obviously it's gonna hit, the armor's gonna hit up here. But that is just so cool with the way that the knee and the leg moves. And if you can see, here, this armor piece, it moves up and down in time with the leg because it's all joined inside by some cool hinges. So yeah, the legs are impressive, just exactly the same as before though. I do not see any difference. These bits move a bit. Uh, toe, toe tips and a ball joint for that shield in front of the uh, foot there. As you can see, two separate pegs coming off or rather one more extra peg coming off that foot for the uh, little guard there. Here has some motion. It doesn't go all the way back because it's gonna hit the uh, part for his umbilical cord. I keep saying his, I don't know what it really is, it. The mouth also moves, so that's quite nice. Now, as I showed before, the I went with the stickers for the face. I think it just pops more. Unfortunately, I think I cut like a little, I don't know, it kind of took some of the shine off that one, but what can you do? Uh, apart from that, the head has some limited motion. Um, it is joined also by another one of those hinges to this bit down here. So when you move it, it also moves the neck piece. This is exactly what we've seen before in previous kits, so nothing new there. This time, unlike before, nothing went wrong with these uh, shoulder pieces. They actually snapped into place rather than just type of smudging in. So there was a definite click when this went in. And I think that uh, that was the first time I've had it so easy because with the other ones, I had to, have to glue one into place because it just wasn't, um, it wasn't working for me. Uh, but yeah, whether they changed anything, I don't think they believe they did. I think I just got lucky this time. Uh, these parts obviously move up and down and you've got exactly the same arms as before. You turn the hand, you know, this bit here. As the hand moves, so does this armor piece. So you can see maybe just under there, there is actually a type of a, a movement section on a ball joint. So you've got the armor flexibility as well. As they state here, where the armor follows the movement of the arms and when they are articulated, have been emulated. So basically it moves in time with the hand, which is cool. And that's exactly what happens in the movies. Same backpack mechanism here, allowing you to uh, flip up this part and expose, if you can just about see it, uh, expose the hole there. 
get that light on it. There is a hole there for the entry plug. I haven't actually made that this time because I just, you know, I've got three of them already. So you have to apply a, a sticker to it. And I've experienced this before that you're gonna need some type of cement or setter to make sure that sticks because it just peels off otherwise. So be careful with that when applying. Aside from that, I mean, there's really nothing new here apart from the face and the color scheme, but uh, you still get your little area here to put in, I'm probably doing this the wrong way around, but to put in one of those knives. So anyway, yeah, knife will go in there. I'm not gonna put it all the way in because you have to type of hit, hit it to get it out. So all in all, generally the same kit, different color scheme. You do get this different weapon from before. You also get the same weapon as all the other ones have. So it's a 209 millimeter rifle and it's for only used with EVAs, whether it's this one here. And just reading here, it says it's the Thunder Spear. So uh, that's the name of that rifle. You can see here, um, I did it once before I put the water decals on, but because I'm doing this review sharpishly, I don't want to put them on and then have them wet because I'll be touching the Eva and it's gonna move all of those decals. As you know, water slides, you need to give them a few hours to set. So that's all for articulation. Many of you will know about this already. Uh, oh yeah, just to say that this can go into a compact form, uh, which allows him to hold it differently. Uh, as you see, this also moves up and down. Pretty cool. So as for comparison, actually when I was moving this around, not so much this one, but the Unit 1, which was the first one out, is a lot more creaky. It's, um, I really don't want to move it around too much because I feel like parts, you know, it's very susceptible for parts falling off. Whether it's this one, it seems, it may just be me, but it really seems like it's uh, more solid. The proportions are generally the same. I think, you know, the heads are obviously going to change things. But that same exoskeleton is uh, pretty much, I believe, to be the same thing. So I can't really tell because the runners do say 2020 and, and most of these were, I think, this one definitely was built in 2020. Um, cannot recollect if that was last year. I think it was. So there you go. These are new runners, whether it's earlier this year or with this kit, but much sturdier and a better build, in my opinion. Uh, so similar looks, but is it me or is this is this something? Have they done something to the tooling to make this a more sturdier kit? As you can see, I had so much hell with this one, getting those little shoulder lapels in. I'm not even going to try right now, but you can see um, in there that the right hand side one's fallen off. This one just has never even tried coming off. I didn't even have to glue it, you know? So it may just be me, it may just be the way that maybe I've got better at making the kit, but uh, very creaky in this one, very flexible in my opinion. So summing up, maybe I'm crazy, maybe I've just become better at building, but I feel like this kit is better than definitely the Unit 1, maybe the Unit 3. The only downside is that it doesn't have any DX version, which, you know, I'd like to have seen something with it. When I got down to it, I'd say it took me uh, five or maybe a few more hours to build. I can't really remember, I spread it over so long. But it was enjoyable. The only parts that were finicky were the head, maybe. Just make sure you get everything in the right order, otherwise you're going to have cracks and it's going to look weird. But having all these three together really looks perfect and I'm really happy with it. So hopefully they bring out another unit, some maybe something from some of the new movies. And please bring out a DX version, that's all I ask. Anyway, thanks for watching, like and subscribe and I'll see you again next time.